What we're gonna do now is go back to the next episode. Back to the next? Back to the next. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I started out with some SWV stuff, okay, and then I started going to the next episode with like some some Dr. Dre and that kind of. But then, okay, and then I just you know it just it just kind of just fell apart from there. You have an interesting thought process. Thank you. So. <laughs> Thank you. It is, it is uh, well informed. Uh, we this is uh, the sixteenth episode of ABC's of TPBs. We are on the P's. Mm. Uh, I've got Paper Girls, another image joint by uh, by the 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 triumvirate of Vaughn Chang Wilson. And uh, Mr. Man over here, the, the lovely Seed. Uh, I'll take that. Lovely, I'll take that. Lovely, yeah, lovely Thank seed. you. Uh, he has got uh, Planetary. Yes. Uh, it's another, uh, that was a wild storm. That was a wild storm. Wild yeah, storm. DC wild storm type deal? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really great stuff. Well, I mean, uh, well, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get to that. Here in this moment. But uh, we're starting out with the paper goes. Before we begin, since we've been out on hiatus, is there any, is there, are there any new things going on with Paprika? Uh, uh, new things. Then we got the Patreon is still rolling on, mm-hmm. trying to get some more subscribers. How many subscribers do we have at this? At moment? this moment, twenty-seven. I'm, I'm not gonna put out the fact that uh, when we first broached this topic, forty some odd of you said you would donate, but we're not gonna get into that. But we do have twenty-seven right now. I'm we just seem saying, to be, you know, Black Friday sale is still going on, going going strong on the Patreon. The Black Friday sale, which means you can get the two dollar subscription for two dollars. That's the sale we have going on right now. <laughs> Um. Uh. But yeah. Yeah. That's that's kicking along. We're doing some some things with that money. We're getting some good quality studio time in. We mm-hmm. have uh, we've got our uh, our award uh, all done up for the the movie trivia champion that'll be coming here at uh, the end of the year. Mm-hmm. A couple other things we got going on with that money too. So you know, we're rolling, we're rocking, we're rolling, man. Mm-hmm. Each uh, each show is we we, we kind of stumbled in the back half of this year. Mm-hmm. But uh, hopefully, start in 2019, we'll be back on track and firing mm-hmm. with each show on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. Uh, more of that, the Paprika State of the Union show mm-hmm. later on next month. Fair enough. Yeah, that's yeah. it, man. That's Excellent. all. That's all Paprika's got going on, man. Yeah. We're just trying to stay afloat, man. Season 11 starts next week. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to it. I am also looking forward to it as you, well. You've had a little bit of a break. Yeah, you took kinda... six weeks off, man. Six weeks, man. Six, six weeks, weeks off. We didn't do shit for other popular <laughs> shows during that six weeks. It was a nice break from damn near everything. But okay. we're gonna be back in full effect with everything. Okay, fair enough. Fair what about you, sir? What's 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 new in the world, of Dave? Any uh, any new? What you been reading? Books or comics? Uh, books and comics. Well, uh, actually, books. I've been. I started. Uh, was it the Lost Stars? Uh, the Star Wars book mm-hmm. uh, novel. I've been. I've started to read. Uh, and I've got I've got a lot of stuff on in the till for uh, for books that I've been I wanted to check out um, books and comic books I want to check out that Miracle Man series I as well will be checking out Miracle Man I think uh, I get paid on Friday I'll scoop up I think it went like just assemble twelve issues and mm-hmm. it's and it wrapped up his run yep. so I think I'm gonna scoop up those and uh, I've heard nothing but good things so yep. I guess we'll be we'll be checking that out together so. okay. We just have to do a whole side episode on Miracle Man. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, As am did I. You, Tom Kingman. Did you read any of uh, Tanahasi Coates' uh, Captain America? No, Cap is just not a dude. I really just want to sit down and read a series about. Well, then maybe I mean maybe it's a jump on point for you because I mean I I read it and it was it was it was decent. I've I've like to read the first two issues. Yeah, it was decent, but it didn't want me. It didn't have me coming back. Hmm. Like the last like his last foray with um, Black Panther. Uh, for me. Uh, the only cap I sat down and read was Winter Soldier, uh, mm-hmm. the great Ed Brubaker, who's considered one of the best Captain America writers out there. And Captain sure. America White, which is the uh, the Jeff Loeb tin sale hmm. story, you know, the Spider-Man Blue and Hulk Gray and yeah. Daredevil Yellow. Cap White was really fucking good. Hmm. Uh, and in the Winter Soldier, I think, is good, not because it's a good cap story, but because you have Brubaker, which is one of the best writers out there writing mm. it uh and it's the return of you know bucky barnes mm-hmm. but a cap as a character he's superman to me i really don't care about either one of them mm. don't care about either one of them okay but maybe i'll give it a, a check out to see what coach is talking about mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see if someone well, with the novels that he's read mm-hmm. how he takes on uh the shining beacon of u.s blonde haired blue-eyed captain america that was my that was my interest in it as well. Yeah, so I'll let you. I'll let you. Yeah, like I, said, I have the first two issues. You want to borrow them? All right. Uh, take them with you and you know caress them gently as you, you as know, you do as yeah. you do with as comics. Do. Yeah. Well, let's 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 pop into uh, the peas here. That we're starting with Paper Girls. I, this is uh, one that I was. That's my pick for this uh, this go round. Is that yours or mine? 
This is mine because okay. I also got it signed. Okay, yeah, we both have them signed. Yeah. Uh, I got, uh, yeah, I got Jared. What was it? Uh, it's Jared Fletcher. Jared Fletcher. Yep. I think I'm going to sign this one. Is this, is this mine or is this? Did you just get two? Did you get one signature? Or two or I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember if I just have. Because I know I haven't, I haven't gotten Bruns. Whose signature is that? That's, uh, that's Matt Wilson. Matt Wilson? Wilson? Yeah. Oh. I get Wilson to sign every time. He's so happy to go to every convention. Yes, he is. I, I mean, we might just have the, the the exact same signatures on both of our joints. Okay, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, we'll, we'll find it. No, it's, this has to be yours because I saw mine on the bookshelf yesterday. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, you sure I didn't like use one of the time devices <laughs> to in, in, in the series? Steal and, my copy, which you already copy. have, copy. <laughs> right. and then bring it back <laughs> to the present just to just to mess with you. All right, and I, I um, wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah, getting into Paper Girls, it's, this one's a, a trippy read. Um, and in, in a good way. Uh, this, this story is about... What? I think I just remembered something. What did you just remember? Uh, well, getting everything together for Pop Rico Awards. Yeah. Uh, getting all my categories together. I just realized I don't have Paper Girls Volume 4 on there, which it damn rightfully deserves to be on there. It should there. be on there. Let me, let me add that. Keep, keep on. Keep on. I, I, so I, I'm going to add that so, to... So I'll, First, I'll, I'll, I'll credit the folks in, uh, in charge of this stuff. So you got Brian K. Vaughn as the writer. Cliff Chang as the artist, Matt Wilson on colors, Jared K. Fletcher with letters. So, you guys may have know, may know about Brian a little a little about this Brian K. Vaughn guy. Yeah, yeah, he's been uh, around for a minute. He's been around for a minute. Like the, the, the last big thing he's been working on was it Saga? Yeah, it's Saga, a little something Saga, called Saga. Saga. Uh, gut punch for that last issue. Yeah, that is a <laughs> double gut punch for all y'all that are caught up on Saga or not caught we up. We have we haven't gotten to the S's yet, sir. Yeah. Well, we're not doing Saga for S's. Uh, well, we should be. <laughs> we probably should we be. Probably I deliberately did not pick Saga for well, my because because everybody's reading. Cause everybody's reading. Everybody's reading. Everybody's reading. Everybody's reading. Anyways, Fairness. yeah. BKV uh, he did uh, he did some work for Marvel before. Yeah. And DC, I think, before he went out and got independent with his life. And he's also yep. doing a uh, barrier, which is a barrier, yes. an image joint all in landscape form mm -hmm. instead of your uh, up and down portrait. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Uh, Cliff Chang as the artist there. You may remember Cliff from his work on the New 52 Wonder Woman back when it was actually good. That's right. That's I was right. reading uh, the first uh, volume because it was the Brian Azzarello joint. Right? Yeah. yeah, Brian Azzarello, Brian like, Azzarello and Chang. Why is this art so familiar? Mm -hmm. Paper Girls. Paper Girls. That's why it's, I, it's I, solid, I, solid art. Dude, solid is that art. the art's better than the story in Wonder Woman? I'll tell you that much uh, right now. It's 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 appropriate for the story. Okay. It's the story, the story is good for Wonder Woman. The story is um, okay. Art was great. It's the best Wonder Woman story ever told. The New Fifty Two Wonder Woman is that one. That one specifically, the 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 Chang Azarello run. Okay. When when the Finches pick up, that's when it goes to garbage. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Stop at Azarello's. What you're saying. Stop, when Azarello's no. done, you're done. When Azarello's done and Chang's done, you're done. All right then. Yeah. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Um, so Paper Girls deals with. A group of paper girls, they, uh, ladies that are young young women growing up in the '80s, Cleveland, they're on a paper route. They've got to get stuff done. Get stuff um, done. And there's a lot of stuff that ensues. There are there's this this came out before uh, Stranger Things, I believe. Oh, uh, Stranger uh, Things was 2016. 2016 was it? 2016? I think this is 2016 too. And this is 2016 as well. So you've got you've got a very Stranger Things kind of vibe with this yes. part. You know, it, it's, it goes back. It's, it's going retro for one, and it, it's a group. It's a group of four. It's mm -hmm. another, um, and then they're they're involved in some things that are you know beyond kind of supernatural. But this one lit, tends. It leans more towards the science fiction aspect. Yes, this is definitely science. Yeah, whereas Stranger Things goes more supernatural, mm -hmm. Paper Girls goes more science fiction. And it's there's a lot of stuff that has to deal with time travel in this, um, and it is it just and just different cultures that uh, that you know that you see popping up um, throughout time. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the cult of Apple is like one of the the main. This this it's the main. That ain't future. That's now. That's what, well, <laughs> <laughs> it says me um, with my iPhone and iPad in front of me. Exactly. Um, what did you? Let's, let's just kind of get into it because it, it's a lot of it's a lot of story and, it, and it's one of those things that I, we've talked about this mm -hmm. book before. How when we start reading the first one again, just reading this, we just felt compelled to continue reading through, yeah. through the the rest of the issues that we had on, on hand. Um, I think I, I think I kind of I can come sum that up into this this kind of phenomenon. Okay. It's like it's like finding uh, coming back to uh, uh, coming back to your lover. You've already you you have a you established rapport with them. You know you guys are in sync. You, you know you know what you know can get in there and it's just it's comfortable. It's it's satisfying. It's 
it's where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Um, reading this is, is a lot like going back to that 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 comfort zone. Okay, uh, you, you 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 know what to expect, but you this it something is just it's warm and it envelops you and inviting, and, and it just brings you in. And it's like, yes, I've read this many times before, but I just get pulled back in, and right, it, right. It, it conjures that it just conjures a, a feeling. Um, it has a, a certain vibe to it that just that makes you want to keep reading it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that's that's what I got for. What, what what was your take on this book? Oh, uh, talk about the story a little bit. You know, like you said, it's a story of four girls on a paper route. Mm-hmm. Uh, some some shit goes down on this particular night. Mm-hmm. Um, Halloween night. Halloween night. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just kind of throws, which makes no sense of a why. When are they delivering this paper? Because if it's in the right. morning time, people already walk around dressed up, which makes no sense. Right. And then if it's nighttime, when people would be walking around dressed up, no one delivers papers at night. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest issue with that. That's but your that, biggest issue? That aside, <laughs> uh, there's time travel involved with this. There's there's alien-ish type things going on here mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bond between the four paper girls uh, are interesting to see and how they get paired off in kind of their own separate adventures mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, and then you are you have the new girl who's who's the reader's introduction into these girls and this world. Mm-hmm. And that's who you latch on to. Mm-hmm. And I think she has probably the, the second most growth and development out of the paper girls. It is uh, it is an amazing story, man. It's it is the art is appropriate for the story. Mm-hmm. The art matches the tone. The pacing is very good. There's no point where you're not uh, involved mm-hmm. in what's going on. Mm-hmm. The the thing that stands out to this book for me, as well as the story is, and as good as the art is, the colors. I mm-hmm. think this is the best colored comic book I have ever read. And it's 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 all due to uh, to Matt Wilson, man. It's all due to Matt Wilson. He's got he's got this. It's kind of a, an understated trippy. Uh, like Technicolor kind of thing. It, it, it's vibrant, but it's still muted, muted at the same time. Yeah, he uses a lot of flat pastels, mm-hmm. um, which belies if you just pick it up off the off the shelf because mm-hmm. off the shelf it looks bright as shit. Mm-hmm. And you oh, you turn that first page, it looks bright as shit. And so you actually get into the story, and mm-hmm. it's everything's all muted pastels. Yeah. It reminds me of Evan Paul Berger's work, and he does uh, fellow pop Rican Evan mm-hmm. Paul Berger, who mm-hmm. does who works in the same kind of color scheme a lot mm-hmm. with his Sharkhead story, which mm-hmm. I cannot wait for the public to read. Mm-hmm. But yes, I think this is the best colored comic book I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm-hmm. It's weird stuff in here, man. It's, There's it's, some it's, weird shit it's going wild. on. It's wild. You got it's dinosaurs a, and technology. It's uh, it's enough that I'm just like, nah, this is too weird. I'm out. It's weird enough that you're like, what the fuck is going on? Which exactly. makes you get on to the next issue, yeah. the next volume. It's weird enough to 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 keep you hooked, I guess. Yeah, uh, it's, it's weird enough to keep you hooked. Like I gotta yeah. figure out what the fuck's going on. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you as it reveals more things, it's it's not like Lost in that in that Lost would would ask nine questions, answer two, and then ask 12 more. Yes. Uh, this one, it, 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 it answers some questions. Some things you just kind of arrive at naturally as the story progresses. It doesn't mm-hmm. actually have to... Yeah, that's one thing I like about it. It doesn't hold your hand. It says, hey, you, if you haven't figured this out by now... You know, you just missed, you just missed the boat. Yeah. But yeah, there's yeah, something yeah. that's like, hey, here's your explicit uh, um, Explanations of things, but other things just kind of absorb as time goes on. And maybe that's what maybe that's one of the things that's that's great about this. It it really has that absorption factor. Yeah, I don't um, think this is an issue to issue book. I think this is best read as a trade in one sitting. In one sitting, and say if they can just go ahead and finish publishing all of this stuff. I don't, know, I don't we don't. Have they talked about how many trades they're going to do? I have not heard anything on how long this book is going to last. Generally, they don't tell you that kind of shit offhand right uh the most hint we've gotten of saga is with the clues he's dropped in what volume nine we're somewhere at the halfway point mm-hmm. but as far as paper girls goes that's eh, no telling no telling whatsoever mm. uh i've stated it i can't remember um what it's been a while but i said i like things to start off normal and then get progressively weirder like don't start me weird mm-hmm. start me at a place of comfort and then Go down the rabbit hole of weirdness, and mm-hmm. this is the perfect example. It starts off normal. It's mm-hmm. four girls doing paper route. Some dudes harassing them. They're like, "Ah, oh, this guy's a jerk." Mm-hmm. And then you know, one of them gets attacked by something, and then it gets weirder and then it's weirder weird. and then weirder, mm-hmm. and then you get to that. 
right. <laughs> to that page right there. One thing, do you have any critiques about about this other than the fact that they're delivered this the first scene? We finds our heroes delivering papers either in the, the, the middle of the of like the, of the, in the evening or like the, the early morning. Yeah, it which, still makes no sense to me. Yeah. But I understand why they did it. I think this is almost airtight mm-hmm. as the story goes. It's it does time travel well. Stuff mm-hmm. that you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And mm-hmm. then you keep reading. And you're like, oh, I see how they arrived at that yeah, point. You got exactly. to keep reading to get the payoff it's, it is, of the uh, setups. It is tied up rather neatly. One, the one complaint that I had about it, or I guess one critique that I had about it starting off was that it didn't feel like the dialogue between the, the, the young women fit them mm-hmm. uh, in terms of... I I had not been around women who who speak in these in this way. Mm-hmm. Um, very very frank, very in your face, very I don't know, very satirical uh, or sarcastic in, in some respects. Yeah, in a way that it made me feel like even teen boys wouldn't ex- exactly speak this way either. Hmm. It seemed like it was a little I don't, know, it's, I don't say put upon, but it's like they're. The writing has, the writing itself is is great. Yeah, but I couldn't see some of these some of the dialogue coming out of the of the women. Um, I, so I'm trying to look for an example here, but like something like we're not waiting through another inch of this diarrhea until you tell tell us who you are and and where you're taking Aaron. Uh, the ways that they kind of talked to each other. See, to me, it kind of makes sense. Oh, mm-hmm. I just didn't think about it in the fact of. Uh, when I was this age, I was never around. But this is them mm-hmm. unguarded. Uh, it's unguarded. So and, if, yeah. if I was around a group of these four, there yeah. might be more guard in what they say as I'm the outsider. Yeah. But this is just them four. They I, don't I have guess, any reason to be, you know, yeah, any but, other way than what they are. I guess, I guess and I, I've, I've read reviews and I said, oh, yeah, it's great that, you know, that they're talking like kids will talk to each other. I was like, I don't. I don't know many kids that talk to each other in, in the ways that they talk. And mm-hmm. it's, it's like it's very it's like they're a bit more adult, more worldly than yeah. their age actually the lies. indicates. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I like, said so that 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 stuck out to me, mm-hmm. but it didn't keep me from reading the stories. I mean, I love the characters. I love seeing their their development. I love seeing how the the, the various twists and turns. So this is like you can't just. Say there's one. Hey, there's the twist. I'm like, which one? Yeah, yeah just, there's just so many things that, that are revealing. It just it just it comes together so nicely. You don't know who to trust sometimes, and you're yeah. like, all right, well these these kids that save them are they saving them because it's the right thing to do, or are they save them for their own purposes, right. or you know you just don't know it, who to trust. Well, four in, I still don't know who to trust. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a very gray area, and then like even some of the good guys they find the good guys they find along the, the way are they have dubious, yeah, uh, um, intense and intense. ulterior motives. Mm, indeed. So, but, but and, then, and then just learning, you know, finding out things like like this, where you know the uh, one character is really into video games, and you see kind of a play by play of how video games essentially, I won't say raised her, but it helped her cope with a lot of stuff that was going on with her family life. You know, it also made her realize how much time she'd wasted playing those video yes, games. Yes, but it came in handy. Though. Yes, and it, it ended up handy. coming in handy. Yeah. yeah, and each character in each volume kind of gets a little something like that, a little yeah. glimpse into past and future yeah which which i really did that's that's one of the things that that i found to be i find to be missing a lot in a lot of um well i don't say a lot but but in in some of the more classic um comics media um they don't take enough time to spend on the characters and and making them interesting enough that that you want to see what happens with them you know yeah they just want to get from Especially in you know superhero joints, it's just action beat to action beat to yeah. action beat with you know enough to string you along from from A to B to C. Mm-hmm. Whereas this joint is very much it's a it's a good balance of both plot and character driven. Where mm-hmm. superhero joints are almost always plot driven. Mm-hmm. We need Iron Man to get here to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this very much the character's decisions come off naturally to get to the next plot point. Mm-hmm. And it may lead them to the future, it may lead them to the past, and may yeah. they may find some mistakes they have to undo. They it's just it's a lot of it's it's just a really good story. And like I, there there was never a time where I thought, oh, here's here's this this I know what this character is going to decide to do, or I know they, this guy this is going to pop out and it's going to reveal to be this and this. It really was I couldn't see a lot of this, these things coming. Yeah, and, and that was a great that's a great feeling. That's Brian K. Vaughn for you, man. Mm-hmm. I do believe this is the first BKV book we've done, isn't it? 
I think so. Yeah, and I think uh, thinking about the rest of our list is the only BK book we have to do. Mm. So there you go. If you never read anything by Brian K. Vaughn, let Paper Girls, Volume One, mm -hmm. be that joint as well as Saga. But, as, well, as well as Saga. But, you, but you're already reading Saga, so you better already be reading yeah. Saga. Damn it. Yeah. So let's uh, let's. Put a pin in Paper Girls, mm -hmm. and uh, well, so is this, this is a go? I mean, we already know this is a go. <laughs> yeah, both we've already us, talked about future we, we, we both <laughs> we both have all the trades for this and have gotten these things uh, signed. Uh, so, yeah, it just go out and pick one up. This is a it's a double go, a double double go. Yeah. Seed and Ninja Day command you. You must do it. Yes. If we, if we ever we agree on something, that means you must go do it. That's how that works out. I it do is. believe uh, Young Gomez. This is a uh, a book she also gets down on as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah yes. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to checking out Alicia's picks. Yeah, I can't wait till uh, we do, we do this whole bit of business from A to Z again to see what she ass assigns to us. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, it won't be Paper Girls she gives us. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out. Okay. Fair enough. With we'll that pause there. Save it, all. it is possible that something external triggered the accelerated growth of the Pym Particles. Look, Hawkeye, I'm still kind of new around here. What are these Pym Particles? Well, they're what makes wasps shrink. Something about displacing the body <sighs> mass. <sighs> Except now, for some reason, Hank can't shut him off. I have accessed the mansion's medical records. Ant-Man's cardiovascular system cannot take the strain much longer. What do you mean? If he grows to a height of 150 feet, he will die. I must return to my work. And we are back. We are back with well, the, the vengeance. Uh, with a vengeance. With the back half. Of, uh, of our P episode, and we're gonna be talking about planetary, a DC joint. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we get to that, man, we gotta we gotta take some time, which we sh probably should have done up top. Yeah. Uh, to acknowledge the passing of a titan of industry, mm -hmm. with our man uh, Stanley, our boy Stan the Manly, the, the and, Generalissimo uh, himself. Man, mm -hmm. what uh, what are your thoughts on on old Stan? Well, I mean, I mean, it's just something that all the fans they saw coming because he was getting up there in age. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, like I say, he's 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 been the face of Marvel for so long. You I dare say the face of comics. Yeah, you can't uh, you can't have one without the other. It seems. Yeah, it is, he's such a such a strong association, and he's going to be missed. You know, uh, not just not just the cameos in the movies and that kind of stuff, but he he really was a larger than life uh, figure, a person. You know. He, uh, you know, fans may argue online about you know who he created, who he didn't create, but when it, when it comes down to it, he he helped make comics what they are because of his presence. Yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, there's a whole like, standard. This Kirby did that. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever the case may be, he he carried the torch as far as all comics were concerned. Mm -hmm. He was the face. Most people's injury in the comics are generally superhero joints, and then they refine their taste from there. Stan was that entry into mm -hmm. superhero comics and then you can do what you will from there uh he made it accessible to the public he was just that cool that he made it cool to read comics mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying that's one of the things i like most about him uh 95 years old the dude was still fucking hustling out there man yeah. still making appearances still doing what he does mm -hmm. uh i i can't think of anyone few people have hustled harder in their industries mm -hmm. than I think Stan hustled in his. Yeah, he did work to get the to get the word out. He did good work for both the big two, Marvel or DC. He might not have done any work for DC, mm -hmm. but well, but, he actually, he actually, well, he he did uh, write some. He did that series where he uh, he wrote uh, Batman and Superman. Like if he had come up with them himself, ah, how he would have written them. Yes, that was, yes, that was yes, an interesting yes. take. Good old uh, Stanley. Yeah. Uh, what was your favorite Stanley creation, sir? I can't say there was any one creation that was my favorite. It was, I'd say, just himself. Yeah. Just the, the he was kind of, a, like I say, he was kind of a, of a caricature, but it was it was that type of caricature where, where you could believe that, hey, yeah, I know he's he's putting on a, on a face, but he kind of felt like he's this way all the time. Yeah. You know? He's just always at 11. He's, 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 a, he's, he's, he's a grandpa at 11. Yeah. He's, he's just, you know, he's always, he's always that, that cool, he's down to earth. Um, Always has something positive to say, 
and he's just excited, just excited to be there, you know. Yeah, I, I kind of will always be a little salty that I never got a chance to meet the man himself. Yeah. But uh, you know, he came to Heroes Con. He couple came, times, he came just, to Heroes Con the I, I, year I got here, and I got here in December. It was that June that really? he came, so I missed him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I so know, like, I didn't know you showed up that recently. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it was 2014. Hmm. Um, I mean, I got to see Claremont, and I thought that was my, my big legend. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess people end up being the, the big legend sure. uh, for me. Unfortunately, never get a chance to see Stan, but it is what it is. He, mm-hmm. he, he did in good words. He gave the world Spider-Man, the most heavily merchandised superhero of all time. Yes, mm-hmm. it is Spider-Man, not Superman or Batman. Mm-hmm. For me, he, he created the Avengers. The Avengers is, to me, the greatest superhero group. <laughs> I know how you feel about the Avengers. Of all sir. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it did. Is it lazy? Yeah. Let's just take these characters, put them together, and give them their own book. Mm-hmm. But, damn it, it works. Yeah. It works just fine. Yeah. Uh, we get a couple more cameos of the man coming up in the you know the next following few movies. Mm-hmm. I, I think it'll be a different tone in the audience when we get these cameos mm-hmm. now. When he popped up in Black Panther, when I saw the screening of it, were you at the screening? I know Jermon was there. Were you at the screening? You got to see it the s- Monday before it came uh, out. I think. No, I didn't see it at the screen. I saw it for the first time. No, I was out of town. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's 98% black people in mm-hmm. the theaters. Uh, Stan comes onto the screen and the theater just erupts with mm-hmm. applause. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like the 10% is like, who the fuck is this old white guy that they're applauding for? <laughs> but uh, just to see that kind of reception for, for Stan the man and the shiesty little role that he's in in Black Panther, oh, stealing yeah. my man's chips. <laughs> uh, it's. Do you have a hold on to yeah. for you. Do you have a, a preferred Stan cameo? For Stan cameo, um, let's see here. Yeah, he popped up in all the Marvel joints, not just the MCU. But I thought the MCU always did the best, with yeah. the exception of Deadpool one, where yeah. he was the strip club DJ. Yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, a cameo that I was like, man, I, I didn't, I didn't see him. That Iron Man one and two, he was I mean, mistaken that, for Hugh Hef and uh, yeah. and Larry King. Yeah, he was just in the crowd and that first uh, Raimi Spider Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was uh, he's been a janitor. He was in clean up in uh, Homecoming. He's mm-hmm. uh, he's a dude who drinks uh, the soda with the infected Bruce Banner blood and Incredible Hulk. Yeah, he was uh, he was hanging out with some ladies in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, he cuts Thor's hair in Ragnarok. Yeah, he's he just he's the watcher. He's he's like he's essentially the watcher. He's yeah, he's the watcher, watcher in Guardians too. Yeah, yeah. He's a. I, I wouldn't say that I had a favorite. It's just it's like anytime he pops up, he's just gold. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's a scene chewing gold. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's well, good. It's good. It's yeah. good. Uh, may his characters uh, forever reign. Yes. Cheers. Here, here. Here, here to Stanley. Excelsior. We're here on this back half to talk about Planetary, uh, Mm -hmm. a a DC Wildstorm business Mm -hmm. written by our man Warren Ellis with art by John Cassidy, who is also of uh, X-Men fame. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what X-Men, because there's been 300 X-Men series. I know, he's worked on New X-Men. New X-Men? Yes, all right, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, Laura uh, Dupuy, I do believe, is on the letters and colors. Mm -hmm. Um, All... Over the world and other stories. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my first foray into the planetary joint. This mm-hmm. is uh, so. If me sure you get this straight, Wildstorm was a subsidiary of DC. Mm-hmm. So it was DC, and they also had Wildstorm, and they had Vertigo, mm-hmm. and none of that shit crossed over really with anything else. They are there. This main DC, and then Wildstorm had their little universe, mm-hmm. and then Vertigo is a bunch of one-offs. Mm-hmm. Okay, just to make sure I got that right. Yeah. Uh, this joint is interesting, mm. man. I'm not a huge Warren Ellis guy right. at all. You hate his guts. I, I do, to put it lightly. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I hate his guts, I just don't find his work all that interesting to me. Mm. Like, Ellis just isn't my guy. Just like he's Rick a, Remender isn't he's my a, guy. Warren Ellis is a, he's definitely, a, you have to warm up to him, but he's he's weird out of the gate. Yeah, and he's I, weird I, out of the gate. And I think for you, you need that, that warm up to weird, period. Yes, yeah. yes. What other Ellis joints? We did an Ellis, or you brought an Ellis recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next wave. Next wave. That's you what just, was, you just shut yeah, down. You I shut down. Yep, didn't, didn't even it. didn't even finish. Uh, this one is not as weird out of the gate. Mm-hmm. It starts out mysterious out of the gate, mm-hmm. and then you get a couple of answers. Mm-hmm. So basically, you have uh, you know, you have this cat who's recruited into this shadowy organization, mm-hmm. and they are there to just 
Would you say stop crime all over the planet? Then they don't want to stop crime. They're the, they're, the, they're not mystery, the cleanup they're team. They're the mystery archaeologists. They're yeah. finding the secret, the, the secret history of the world. The secret history of the world. That's a good way of putting it. They mm-hmm. kind of show up when some shit's gone down. I know mm-hmm. that's the case in one or two issues. Mm-hmm. They kind of show up after things have happened and they kind of clean up the area and, mm-hmm. and you know. Piece things together, to glean what they can from yeah. what's been left behind. Yeah, so you, you're introduced to this through Elijah Snow. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is the reader's end to this series. Mm-hmm. And you find out answers as kind of Elijah finds out answers. Mm-hmm. And I think I, as a reader, shared his frustration of not getting a lot of answers to know what the hell. Because mm-hmm. you can tell they're just, they're piecemealing them information. Right. And they're holding a lot back. Mm-hmm. Uh, it frustrated Elijah, it frustrated me as a reader. Mm-hmm. Um, I was almost ready to give this up until they dropped a little... Uh, it's a little nugget for me. What's the, what's the nugget? What's the nugget that that that, uh, that... They, they dropped some authority in there for me, uh. and I was like, okay, now I'm in. <laughs> now I am in. Okay. Uh, and it's very. It's not just like I talked to a Paul with Midnighter the other day. It mm-hmm. was. Uh, they they spoke more roundabout of the adventures that you saw in the Mark Millar. Mm-hmm. Was he the he did it first authority? I think yeah, I think Millar was. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with. <clears throat> With London or the Los Angeles being attacked, I think London got attacked, Mm -hmm. and I think Japan got attacked Mm -hmm. uh, in authority, that first volume, and they make reference to that, those incidents happening here, and I was like, oh, there's ties, so I'm not sure if they will go on to have any further ties in the other uh, three volumes of Planetary, but it was enough to pique my interest Mm -hmm. that I might want to keep reading to see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So you got an interesting cast of characters. You got uh, your boy Elijah Snow, you had the drummer. Mm-hmm. Who I can't remember what his uh, his specific talent was. Uh, he's the technology guy. He can, he's your technology he can, guy. He can hear and and yeah, he can he can deal. It's just innate for him. Yeah, yeah, kind of <laughs> like uh, I think of it's kind of like uh, the kid Micah from Heroes. Hmm. He was very technology oriented, and then they have uh, the woman who's kind of leading this whole thing, whose name also escapes uh, me. Jaquita. Yes, Jaquita. Uh, she's, they, she's, they, the, she's the brains and the muscle. Yes, and they kind of have an interesting. Uh, like this, the story is the kind of the adventure to get into. I guess if there's like a an Indiana Jones for superheroes, that's what Planetary would be. Hmm. Only you get more answers than Indiana Jones. Sure. Uh, yeah. Did, I, this did, is, did you finish this? Volume? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I finished the whole thing. I think it's just enough to get me to the next one. Okay. Just enough to get me to the next one. I'd be interesting to see if they keep doling out and piecemealing little bits of information if we get more of because there is a hint of a bigger picture here in oh, this yeah. volume like there's a there's a group back in the day who you know they they're doing things with multiple timelines and mm-hmm. alternate dimensions and there's they're trying to stop world war ii i mm-hmm. think they they've obviously they failed in that <laughs> that that joint but who knows what else they they did manage to succeed or fail in mm-hmm. um I like to know more of what those guys get into, and if, mm-hmm. if any of those characters come back into play, or if they're all just dead for good, or you know what the case may be. I'm I'm willing to I'm going to put this out there because because uh, you this this uh, it eluded you last time when I said hey did you know this was a kind of a theme or these things that were covered in it so did you did you like the the trapes back through this essentially as a nostalgia fest. Why would you consider this a nostalgia fest? Because you get you like the, one of the things you get the, the giant monster island that's called back to Godzilla. Mm-hmm. You get the you know the the was it the growing woman uh, the um, you get the, uh, the this this scene here which is essentially uh, the just an evil just well not even evil but a Justice, Justice League, League type yeah, deal yeah, yeah, deal. yeah so yeah, you, yeah. you get uh, Axel uh, who's more of that um, was it um, Axel Brass who's the that doc not Doctor Strange but the like that. Big chested adventurer type of um, what is it like Tom Strong that that kind of type. So a lot of this, the okay. classic yeah that comes out of like the classic the, uh, characters comes out of like the fifty serials where, yeah fifty yeah, serials very, pop yeah, okay, culture very very yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. All, all I did notice the Godzilla reference. Yeah. Definitely notice the Godzilla. Yeah, reference. all the yeah. stuff that that comes to I mean you got the shadow you got the, all these different things that that like have been classic pop culture staples mm-hmm. are represented in in this. And trying to catch up with uh, things going on in the in uh, the archaeologists. Have you have you heard anything about? I'm trying to think of uh, this book. That's uh, the four like their appearance. Who the four? The four? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. Well, although it has been a couple of weeks since I read this. Okay. Well, um, I thought that each joint was kind of its own separate adventure. 
I thought that's what we were going for. And then you kind of realize towards issue like five mm-hmm. or four or five, I can't remember how many issues are in this first volume, that that they each are also part of something else that's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, which I thought was pretty cool. Like the uh, the dudes at the outpost, the uh, the Japanese guys, the outpost, mm-hmm. and they come back and, well, not the Japanese, but the outpost itself comes comes back around and mentioned mm-hmm. later on in the series when he's getting a little bit more answers. and mm-hmm. It's interesting. I would say that if, uh, if I would equate this to if the authority was was is to worldwide order what no the planetary is to handling information technology for the world for the betterment of mankind like the authority is to security. world order and security that kind of thing so they was Wildstorm its own connected universe? Mm-hmm. Okay. It had its, own, it had its own thing that blossomed out, and then DC eventually tried to absorb it back in, and then they've, they've done some things like with the New 52 and stuff like that where they've partially brought them in or all the way brought them in and had characters or had the characters come in but not the actual the universe itself. It's just yeah. it's a hodgepodge of things that they've tried with the okay. universe. And currently they're doing that with the Watchmen people right now with the Doomsday Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I kind of, this made me kind of more interested, oh, yeah, I mean, that's the obvious one right there, yeah. Mm. This one made me more interested in seeing what else Wildstorm has to offer. Mm. So, I think I might go down that road, including Planetary, and seeing what else they were doing. This is, this is early 2000s, I guess? Mm. Yeah, I say early, because I, yeah, I was in college when the series was going on. I will also say that you have the benefit of it being a collected version because this series also saw a number of Haidai mm. as they were finishing it up. So it, it was, I think it was a couple of years before like the, the last six issues were were released. And, and the thing so is, that Matt Fresh and Hawkeye. The thing is, they fans, everyone knew that this was a limited run and it was going to end at a certain number. And then they just got to the point where they just kind of petered out, and they were like, well, yeah, we'll get back to it when we get back to it. That's a Matt Fresh and Hawkeye run. So this is yeah. 99 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I want to go back to that era and see what else Wildstorm was doing. And it, that, it that had time some interesting things out there. Like I said, the, the authority stuff was, it was new and, and brand new for its time. Yeah. You know, a lot of places love, you know, you can't, you can't take a step without seeing some of the stuff that it, it uh, influenced uh, in media, especially in the movies. Because uh, it, 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 the Wildstorm universe made things more, uh, more up to date and more relevant okay. with with current things going on, and, and I think that's that's one thing that it helped propel the classic, like the classic stuff with Marvel and DC. They were telling those same kind of old stories, and it's kind of kind of like a um, um, soap opera trying to rehash and that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whereas this took took fairly newer characters, and then plop them down into the current time frame and say, hey, they're dealing with things that you're dealing with as a reader. Kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So, okay. And then it kind of brought everyone else into the fold. There. So they, they kind of led the charge on that. Let me ask you so, this. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody tweeted out the other day um, with regards to authority. Mm-hmm. I guess in Boston in general. Zack Snyder should have done, if you want to do gritty and edgy, they should have let him do authority instead of Justice League. Yes. Yes, you, it's something I also agree with. Yeah. That's something I also agree. Yeah. It hit me. And I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was yeah. just trying to. It has the right fit energy. It has the right energy. Forty type them. characters into onto Superman and Batman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's difficult. Uh, like say it from yeah. If you're going for that gritty realism, Zack Snyder is your guy. If you're going for, hey, let's uh, let's show these characters in their kind of their best light in the in the classic uh, iconic. Uh, optimistic light. That's not, to, that's not your man. Yeah, go to Joss Whedon. Go to Joss Whedon. <laughs> well, not with that. Not with that purported Joss Whedon Wonder Woman script that was well, out there. Well, yeah, it's a, but it's a you thing. can go to any number of people that, that can give you a a hopeful Superman that can that you can you can believe a man can actually fly. Mm-hmm. That's not what you're getting out of the Zack Snyder John, and yeah. that's not what you get out of the Authority. But this right. isn't about the Authority. This is about planetary. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is a go for me. Um, I might see if uh, the joints are on sale. I might pick up that second and third one oh, uh, digitally and see what we're talking about. Going to this is the most palatable Warren Ellis I've ever read. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Ellis did the first Moon Knight run after oh. uh, Secret Wars, I do believe. So you were into you were into Ellis then with Moon Knight because it already yeah. was crazy. Uh, 
yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was it's just uh, he just did one volume. It's six issues, six completely separate stories, mm-hmm. all one offs, and I was one hundred percent okay with that. Okay. Just twenty two pages of a good story. 22 pages of a good story, 20 pages of a good story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is the most palatable. This would be number two for me. Okay, fair enough. That's all I got, man. That's all I got. Uh, we got anything else for you? We got, we got uh, the cues. We got the cues coming up. Cues coming up next. Uh, I've got my cue. Have you gotten your cue? I got my cue, but you're not going to like it. All right, well, I'm going to say my cue is Quantum and Woody. That's the, that's the Valiant joint. Mm-hmm. What is so, your cue? Is this our first foray into Valiant? I, I think, think it so. is. I think so. Because yeah. we didn't do Archer and Armstrong. We hadn't done Exo Man of War. Or anything. Yeah. Uh, no, wait, wait. Did we do, um, what's his name? Uh, the Bloodshot. We haven't done Rai. We haven't done Ninja. The, 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 the Black we? Russian Cosmonaut. Divinity. Divinity. We did Divinity. I think so we did Divinity. That was, that was, that's, okay. so that's, that's New Valiant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. One, and this one is kind of New Valiant. But it's, it's a resurrected uh, Valiant property. Right. Um, right. But yeah, Quantum and Woody. All right, what's so your, what's, what's... I thought and thought and thought and thought, and I could not come up with any Q joint that I wanted to do. I was thinking Queen and Country, and I was like, not that art shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like where this is going. I floated this idea out to you once, and you were 100% against it, which is why I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm doing Quantum and Woody Volume 2. Quantum? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm that's coming what we have right to do. behind you. We, we have to do it. <laughs> yep. So, that's, that's what she said. That's a, ooh. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, we're gonna. Have, it's gonna be. Or I guess if I'm hosting it next time, mm-hmm. I gotta do volume one, yeah, and yeah. then you do. Well, no, no, we, no we, you can, do, we can keep the same. Well, well, you yeah. do volume one, I'll do volume two. Maybe, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll Quantum Woody fashion. We'll review volume two first, and then do volume one. I'm cool with that. Right. I'm cool with that. <laughs> we gotta make sure that we're on the same Quantum and Woody. Also, just two two different eras. So there's old and then the new. So we might we might go that way too. Oh, you're gonna, you're trying to go like classic Valiant? Because I have the new Quantum Woody. Yeah, I was looking at the new Quantum Woody too, okay. but I, it just the thought just occurred to me that maybe we'll go like classic if I find it somewhere. And then we compare the quantum and Woody's, or I'll just do the the volume I th- that I think I think the reason the, the reason that I, I said I said no, I don't want to do Quantum Woody Volume Two is because I liked Volume One, but I trailed off in Volume Two. Hmm. Okay, as I have only read like the first couple issues, I haven't read all of Volume One or Volume Two. Really? So this is all going to be new to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I just yeah. dipped my toe in the Quantum yeah. Woody. I'm, well, I'm well, cannonball. I will say this though: don't start with Volume Two. Start with Volume One. I do believe that's how it's going to well, work. <laughs> <laughs> Some people like coming in on the middle of the story, you know. Yeah, asking a bunch of questions like, anyway, who is uh, this? Yeah, yeah, why are they doing like, things? Like every mom who ever watches the movie. <laughs> <laughs> now why I'm just gonna, doing I'm just gonna finish my noodle point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess we're just gonna do a double double quantum and Woody episode double coming up, man. I guess this is a uh, this is your treat for going so long without anything valiant. You're gonna get double the valiant next episode. Double your pleasure, ribbed for your pleasure, ribbed for both of our <laughs> pleasures. <laughs> All right, then. I think that'll do it for this one, man. Uh, I'll be interested to see what old Gomez gives us for our peas for next time around. Uh, until then, you guys take it easy. <laughs>